the Sunday. If you could all stand, when we're going to start with some worship. So if you're able, uh, just please stand and join us in a couple songs, okay? We just put our trust in you and know that you're on our side, God. We can do anything through your power, God, not through ours, but through you.
worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. I 
Phil, it is my privilege to worship with you today and to walk together through God's Word. You know, this year we've been looking at different people who met Jesus, who encountered the Lord, and, you know, of course, their lives were, were you know, forever changed. Today we are going to look at this family, the family of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Um, you know, this is a a uh, familiar story, uh, but, you know, in it, we see real love, we see real death, and we see God's glory through the resurrection that awaits all of us who believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So as we begin this time, let's open up in a word of prayer. Lord God, as we come before you, as we uh, approach your word, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would open up our ears, that you would um, soften our hearts to receive your truth. That as we read about this family and their relationship and encounter, their experience with, with Jesus, that, Lord, you would show us the ways that this speaks into our own lives, into the lives of our friends, our family members, our coworkers, our neighbors, and the Lord, that the things that you share with us today, that those would stay with us, that they would be embedded in our hearts and our minds so that as we move forward, as we deal with these things of, of love and death and everything in between, Lord God, that, that we would be reminded of who you are and how you are with us in every situation. So, Lord, we thank you, and, and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, you know, this, uh, this year, like I said, we've been looking at many stories, uh, these, these many uh, testimonies that, that people have from their encounters with Jesus. And this is a, a familiar story to many of us. How many of you have heard of, of Lazarus? And he's being raised from the dead. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about my uh, one of my brothers. He uh, lives in Japan with his family, and we got to visit him over the, the new year. And uh, one of the ways that, you know, he was there initially really trying to be a, a missionary in uh, unique ways, in different ways than kind of traditional missionaries. And, and he wanted to do that through business, through other um, kind of avenues. And one of the ways that he was able to share the gospel was by teaching. And, uh, you know, he taught at... Um, a school, he was teaching English, but what he proposed was to uh, teach Bible stories and use that as a way to, uh, you know, to teach English and for Japanese students to learn, uh, the, you know, the language better. And the way that he was able to justify this was that, you know, in, in our culture, we have many... Um, you know, we have this, like, foundation. It's kind of fading away maybe, right? But we have this foundation of people knowing about the Bible and, and referring to it. So his, his kind of argument was, hey, it's important. There are certain stories in the Bible that people should know about because English people may reference them, like, you know, Noah's Ark or, like, who's Moses, right? And Lazarus, like, it's someone that's referred to a lot. I was randomly listening to some music and just a you know playlist was you know somebody's playlist and and there was a line in in a verse taking talking about like raised from dead like Lazarus and I'm like oh okay yeah so these kind of things are all over in our culture this is a very familiar story to us and normally we'll when we're going to talk about something you know people will say like oh hey spoiler alert right well 
I'm going to give you this, the spoiler, uh, and in, in essence, is that this story, I want to summarize it, right? It's, it's that there's a man named Lazarus. He is sick, very sick. And Mary and Martha, his sisters, they send word to Jesus saying, hey, Jesus, our brother Lazarus is sick. We need you to come. And, and basically, you know, the reason why is because they believe that Jesus could heal them. So they're like, Jesus, you got to come and heal our brother before he dies. So Jesus, come quickly. But Jesus doesn't come. He doesn't come, and in fact, Lazarus dies. They bury him in a tomb. And, you know, by the time that Jesus arrives, um, you know, everyone's kind of like, oh, Jesus, you know, you, you came, but you came late, you know. And then he shocks everyone. He shocks everyone because he raises Lazarus from the dead. And then through that miracle, he's able to give glory to God. And so now all of you, uh, you all are familiar with this story. And, you know, this story, it has a happy ending, a happily ever after that we know that, hey, it's going to be okay, you know, in the end, right? It's, it's one of those encounters, one of those stories that, you know, it's going to end well. And guess what? For all of us, for every single person here and everyone that's watching online as well, uh, you know, if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you have that happy ending as well. You have that joyful, happily ever after, forever and ever with our Lord, right? So now that I've told you those things, you, you guys can you know, all go home, right? I mean, that, that, what else is there? We're all good, right? We're going to be okay in the end. You're, you're still here. So, uh, you know, part of that is because we know it's not that simple. Even though we know the end, like, hey, you know, when we die and, you know, when the, the end comes and, and, you know, Jesus will come and, and we'll all be raised up. Yeah, it'll be good one day, but we're not there yet. Right? We're stuck here in the waiting, right? And, and that's where we're going to sit a little bit today. That's where we're going to kind of think about is, you know, what was that like for Mary and Martha? What is that like for us as we are in this place of waiting. We're waiting for Jesus to come. We're waiting for the answer to our prayers. We're waiting for life to, to come up when, you know, all we see around us is maybe death or uncertainty. And so today, as we look at this encounter, as this, uh, you know, story about uh, this family and Jesus, you know, let's have that in mind. So let's begin. John 11, 1 through 3. You can bring that in your Bible or follow along with us on the screen. It says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one who you love is sick. So again, we know that Lazarus is sick. He's very sick. And John, who's the author of this gospel, he is uh, pointing out certain things to us, right? And one of those things is that he's pointing out that, hey, this Mary, you know, there's many Marys in the Bible, but this Mary is the same Mary who actually in the next chapter we're going to read about that, that as she is with the Lord and she knows that, hey, you know, his death is coming. It moves her so much that she washes his feet by, by crying, by weeping over his feet and, and washing them with her hair. And then she pours out this perfume, this expensive perfume. In, in fact, if you read this, um, if you went ahead and, and read John uh, chapter 12 and read about this time, then John points out there that, you know what, this perfume that she poured out, it was very expensive. It was a year's salary. That's how much it was. So, uh, I, you know, I looked at, I think, 2020. They said median in Orange County was like 94000 for a family or something. But you do the math, whatever your annual salary is or, uh, you know, in your house. So just think about that. Like a perfume that's worth that much, tens of thousands of dollars, and here's this woman that's pouring that out. 
it's going to be gone, right? It's not like something that's going to be good next day or the day after. It's like it, when it's gone, it's gone. She's pouring that out on Jesus. And that is how much Mary loved Jesus. So Mary and Martha, they sent word to Jesus. And now we read verse 4. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. He's talking to his disciples. They receive word, and he's like, hey, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And so Jesus, he, he tells us the end of this story is going to be, you know, a joyful one. It's going to be a happy one. It's going to end well where, you know, it's going to be okay. So you don't have to worry, right? Verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And we find out that, you know, I mean, from where he was to where they were, it was only a couple miles. It was only a couple miles. He could have easily made that trip, right? In the first six verses, John, again, pay attention to what he's pointing out. John has told us multiple times, and in fact, in multiple ways, he gives that example of Mary. He's told us multiple times how much this family loved Jesus. And he also states that, hey, Jesus loved this family. Lazarus, he's on the verge of death. Mary and Martha call out for help, and we read that Jesus loves them so much, and he, he doesn't come. He doesn't come because he loved them, right? I mean, what, what is going on? That doesn't make sense. But remember verse 4, Jesus says, it's all going to be for God's glory. It's all going to show who God is, that he's powerful, that he's in control, that he has a plan, that he is love. And ultimately, you know, he does that through pointing us to Jesus. We know the end of the story. It's a happy one. There's going to be this happy ending, right? Lazarus, he's going to be raised from the dead. But at this moment, Mary and Martha don't know that. Lazarus doesn't know that. I mean, I never really thought about this before, you know, this past week. Can you imagine if you were Lazarus on your deathbed? You know that, hey, your sisters are calling out to the Lord. You're like, man, I hope Jesus comes. And you're, you're slowly just, you're just in pain waiting. And you're going and you're going. And you're like, man, when is he coming? When is he coming? When is he? And then, uh, you know, it's, it's too late, right? Jesus didn't come when they expected him to. In Isaiah 55, 8, God tells us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And when we find ourselves in that place of waiting for Jesus to come, and he isn't showing up like we asked him to, when we need him to, when we have, you know, (laughs) when we, we, we have these expectations of, you know, what is he going to do, then sometimes we got to remember that, hey, God's timing, it's, it's not the same as our timing. His thinking is not the same as our thinking. But still, he loves us. Verse 17, it says that on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. For four days, all right? Four days he's been in the tomb. Not just dead, but he's been in the tomb for four days. And, and sometimes in our lives, God doesn't show up like we want him to. Sometimes he doesn't show up. He's too late. And what happens? People die. Sometimes relationships die. Marriages die. Friendships, careers, and seasons of our life die. Death comes in some form, and so we find ourselves still sitting in that pain, still waiting for the Lord. You know, we we see that Mary and Martha, they had waited, you know, at least four days, right? Some of you may have maybe, you know, maybe you're waiting for 
for months. Maybe you're here and you've been waiting for 40 years. You know, I think about Abraham. Abraham was promised that his offspring would be like so amazing. They'd be like uncountable, basically, right? He'd have so many children, but yet decades later after receiving that promise, 89 years old, you know, Sarah, his wife, is still not pregnant. I mean, they're way, way beyond that, that time, right? Um, it's just, I can only imagine. He's like, man, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. What is going on? And we read that when Jesus come, Lazarus, he's been in the tomb for four days. You know, I read that there's a, a the, part of the thinking of that time was that uh, the spirit of the deceased would remain for three days. I mean, the thought is really that, that when the body starts to really decompose and go, then the spirit's like, all right, I'm out of here, all right? It's too late, I'm gone, right? Um, and so... When Jesus comes, it's beyond that, that few days period, right? It's like Lazarus is dead, dead. It's, it's just too late. In verse 21, we read that the Martha goes out to, to meet Jesus, and we know that she's kind of the more practical one, right? Uh, but she goes up out to, to Jesus, and, uh, and uh, in verse 21, we, we find that it says, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Right? I mean, can you pick up on that? Imagine being Martha, having faith that, yes, I know Jesus can heal. I believe that. That's why we called upon him. That's why we put our hope in him. That's why we put our faith in him. And she doesn't say, hey, Jesus, good to see you. Glad you came to, to mourn with us. No, she's like, Jesus, if you came, you know, this would have been different. My brother would not have died. 22, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, maybe in the practical way that many of us would, that, hey, we've been waiting so long. You know what? Hey, one day, one day, yeah, you know, one day, she says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day, right? The end of the world, when everything's made right, then, yeah, he's going to raise again, right? It's, you know, way out there, right? And then Jesus, he says to her in verse 25, he says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And so to paraphrase, it's like Mary is going to Jesus saying, Jesus, you didn't come. You could have come, but you didn't come. And now it's too late. So here we are, Jesus. You know, great. And, and Jesus is like, hey, Martha, remember, there's going to be this joyful ending, right? Where, you know, it's going to be all good. Like, I'm here. It's going to be okay. And Martha's like, yeah, Jesus, one day, one day, it'll be okay. One day, we'll have the resurrection. And Jesus is kind of saying, like, no, today, today, because I am the resurrection. I am the life. He makes that declaration. And then the other sister, then Mary, comes next. Verse 32 says that when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet. She, we, as we read scripture, we think, you know, Martha is kind of the more practical one, getting things done, and Mary is the more um, emotional one or kind of she's feelings, right? She's out there and she's falling with feet. And, and I just picture her kind of, you know, just, uh, you know, in this like, man, Jesus, you know, and she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. You know, when I was in junior high, um, I went to a, a summer camp, 
And uh, like uh, many of you here, you know, that had a huge impact on my life. I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, long story short, I decided to become a Christian uh, that day. It was like a Wednesday afternoon. And, you know, I went from someone who knew about Jesus, who had read the stories and listened to them and gone to Sunday school. I knew about Jesus and, and I went to to become someone that actually knew Jesus, that, that I had a personal relationship with him. I, I believed in him. I really had faith in him. And, you know, I got baptized, and my pastor at the time, who later became my father-in-law, uh, Gary, he, he, you know, he was giving, uh, I think it was uh, one or two of my other friends as, as well, and we got baptized, and he was giving us a gift afterwards. And I remember kind of on the steps of, of the church there, and he had um, like a baseball card. I have no idea when, what kind of card that was or what it was so long ago. But, um, you know, and he asked a question that, that maybe you've been asked if you grew up in the church around that time. It's kind of like we would do this to kids like, oh, yeah, what's your favorite Bible verse? And you couldn't just say, like, oh, it's, you know, whatever, like John 3.16. Like, they, there's this, okay, prove it. Like, it's your favorite, so recite it for me, right? And, you know, I was kind of a, a punk kid back then, and so when he asked me, hey, what's your favorite verse? You know, I said, ah, John 11.35. Jesus wept. And, you know, he kind of he chuckled, like, okay, wise guy. You know, what, do you even know what that means? Right, and, and I could see by the look on his face that he was kind of surprised, like, oh, and he was like, oh, that's a good answer, because, you know, I told him, yeah, Jesus wept, because, you know, he loved Mary, he loved Martha, he loved Lazarus, and, and you know, Lazarus had died, and they'd been waiting for him, and he saw their pain, he even knew that, that you know, he was going to make things right, but he saw their pain in that moment, he was overcome with emotion, and he wept, and he was like, oh, wow, well, okay. I guess that is your favorite verse. You know, hey, good, you know, okay. And I held on to that one for a while because it was just easy to remember, you know, and it was just right to the point. Like, you didn't have to, uh, you know, think like, wait a minute. Um, 100% God, right? 100% man. I mean, Jesus in his humanity understood what it was like. He understood how much it hurt to deal with, with pain, the, the pain and suffering and the loss and, and all this uh, human emotion. And, and he felt that, right? He felt that. He had empathy for Mary and Martha and the community, and he wept. When we read that about that word, you know, it's, it's not like he just shed a tear. You know, like sometimes, and, and the older I get, it's like more and more, uh, you know, these tears just come. And uh, maybe it's the lyrics of a song or just a thought or, you know, I just see some like beautiful, like, you know, like social media, there's like so much junk on there. But, but every now and then there's like these like touch your heart, like good stories. And you're like, oh, that's, that's so good. Like, oh, that's awesome. You know, I'm going to like that twice if I could, you know, but, but it's like. He didn't just shed a tear. You know, Jesus, he, he cried, he poured out, he, he ugly cried, right? Uncontrollable. He's just overcome. It's just a response. He didn't care that all the people around him were seeing him. He just, he wept. Friends, in your waiting, in your pain, in your suffering, in your time of confusion, Jesus is with you. He understands what you're experiencing, and he weeps with you because he loves you that much. Even though he knows that the story ends, you know, in a good way, that it's going to be okay. You know, in the end, we're going to be, you know, spending eternity with him, just overjoyed by his presence. But still, he sits with us. He weeps alongside us. Verse 41, it says, So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. 
I wish they would have like talked to Lazarus, like like, hey, how, you know, how are you doing? How do you feel? You know, what was it like? Or, but we just know that he's alive, right? He was totally dead, and now he's alive. When four days have passed, remember that that thinking. When four days have passed, when it's too late for hope, when Sarah gets to be ninety years old, and it's too late for her to have a child. When Daniel, he's thrown into this lion's den, and it's too late. It's too late for someone to come and save him. When Jonah, Jonah sins against God. He turns away. He runs from God. He finds himself in the middle of the ocean, and he's thrown overboard, swallowed up by a whale. It's too late for him to turn his life around. When it's too late, Jesus proclaims the words that he said to Mary. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? It's my hope today that if you find yourself in the waiting, if you find yourself in a place of hurt, confusion, uncertainty, even facing death, that you would remember that Jesus loves you. And it's never too late for him. It's never too late for him to bring about new life when it seems impossible, to bring about new hope when it seems like, you know, it's totally hopeless, to bring about, you know, a new end or a new season in your life. And so as we find ourselves in the waiting time, you know, I want to encourage you and myself as well to, you know, let's let's dig deep. Let's hold on to faith because we know that Jesus, he not only died on the cross, but he was raised up to life. And because he rose, you know, we also one day we also will get to experience that resurrection as well. And then we will get to spend, you know, our eternity, you know, just in that joy, in in the the presence of the Lord. That just like, you know, I think about involuntary actions, you know, it's like, that's what we read about heaven is that there's this like involuntary, you just have to bow down, you just have to praise, you just have to worship. Because when you see the glory of God, it is overwhelming. And that's what we have to look forward to, is is being in the overwhelming presence of our God. And so we know the end of our story. And we can endure, we can rejoice, knowing that one day, you know, he's going to make all things new. And so I've kept this short today because we're going to have some time to to discuss this as well. Uh, But right now I'm going to invite the worship team to come back and... and, uh, prepare to to close us out with uh, or close this section with a time of worship so as they do that would you pray with me lord god you know each and every one of us you know exactly what weighs heavy on our hearts and what is uh, just on our minds um Lord, it's, it's normal for us that, that, you know, we have been programmed that when we come before others, you know, we, you know, it's like, how are you doing? Oh, we're good. But God, you know our heart. You see the things that we wrestle with. So, Lord, we ask that you would meet us in that place. That as we cry out to you, as we have sent word to Jesus, like, hey, Lord, we need your help. And we're here waiting. Lord, in that place of waiting, we pray that you would grow our faith. Lord, we pray that you would encourage our hearts. Lord, we pray that today that you would show us, that you would declare, that you would speak over us, that you are the resurrection, that you are the life, that there's no other person, there's no other uh, way but you. So, Lord, let us put our hope in you today. And, God, we, 
we have expectation, Lord, that, that you will answer our prayers. We have expectation and faith that, that you are with us, that you're not a distant God, you are not a far away God, you're not a God that, that created the earth and gave us rules and then just left. No, God, you are with us. You care for us and you love us and you even weep. You even weep over our pain and suffering. For that we thank you. For that we give you all the glory. We thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
God, thank you so much. Thank you that in the fears we have in our lives, God, in the struggles, in the unknowns, in those places where our life feels like a battle, God, thank you that that you are here for us with your love, with hope, with your strength and your truth and your encouragement, God, in our hearts and in our lives. I pray that for us, for each of us individually, where we are facing difficult things this week, God, that feel like battles or unknown things this week. God, may we know deep inside of our hearts that you are with us and the battle belongs to you. May we have peace and hope in you. Thank you, God, so much for your love. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you may be seated. We have a few announcements of upcoming events. Today, right after the service, we have mochi. Uh, In a little bit, Pastor Toby will be coming up to share a little bit more about that. But if you can, please stay to enjoy that. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, we have Life on the Streets, the homeless ministry that we have the joy of serving with. Um, It is just, is truly a joy each time we get to be there to cook breakfast together and serve people who are currently experiencing homelessness. So please feel free to join us. It's here in Costa Mesa, right across town, and the the bulletin has um, a sign-up sheet that you can go to, to to let us know that you'll be coming. By the way, in the seat pocket in front of you, there is a QR code that you can use to pull up that bulletin and see the other announcements as well. Next Sunday, we'll be having our society meeting here at church after the service. This will be a time of approving our budget for 2023 and sharing vision and talking about the things that we see God doing this year. Please feel free to come. For those who are on our email list, we've sent out the budget with this week's email, but we can also provide any one of you with a paper copy if you would like. So feel free to reach out to us if if you would like a paper copy of that document. January is almost finished. We've been doing a monthly challenge where the challenge is to invite someone from Rise OC and take them for coffee and tea and then to take a selfie and email it into us. So there's a few days left to still participate in this monthly challenge. I think we'll announce the winner next Sunday and then we'll have a new monthly challenge for February. It's been fun seeing... um, Those of you who have sent photos in, it's just been fun seeing all of the the people enjoying coffee and tea together. Um, I want to invite you into our time of giving of our tithes and offerings. You can give online at our church website. There's also a box in the back to give here in person. And it is... It's our giving that funds the ministry that takes place here. So thank you so much, as always, for just your giving and your faithfulness in that so we can all serve here together. We'll be having a discussion time this morning just for about five minutes to talk about some discussion questions that Pastor Phil wrote regarding his sermon. And if you can put those up, I want to read through those now and then I'll say more about the discussion time. So Pastor Phil's inviting us to think about have you experienced a death of something in your life, maybe a person, a relationship, a job, a dream, other things. Did you call for help from God? And how have you experienced a time of waiting, like what Pastor Phil preached about today, waiting for God to come? And then did you get to see God come and answer your prayer, or are you still in that time of waiting before he comes? For those joining us online, we invite you to also maybe take some time at your home to go through these questions. We want to thank those online for joining us today and wish you a wonderful week. And we'll look forward to 
worshiping um, again next Sunday. For those of us here in person, we're going to take just about five minutes to discuss the questions in groups of like two or three people. And then at the end of that, Pastor Toby will come up and close our service in prayer. So I want to invite you at this time to form small groups of two or three. Uh, Maybe look around you, see if there's uh, someone sitting near you that you can form a group with. Uh, Maybe meet someone new. And we'll take about five minutes to discuss the questions. And then Pastor Toby will close us and give us some directions for the, the mochi. So have a wonderful time discussing Uh, the questions for the next few minutes.